Hi and welcome to our video on um, thyroid metabolism and um, hormone uh, situations. Uh, if you're watching this video it's because you or someone that you love is probably suffering from um, some sort of symptom that you associate with the thyroid gland or with a hormonal dysfunction. Uh, we're going to go into detail on some of these symptoms later and as to why you may be experiencing such a wide array of symptoms. Um, but one of the common things that we hear in our office from patients is, uh, you know, Doc, I, I've, I've gone to see my primary care physician and, you know, I'm depressed, I have no energy, I can't lose weight, I have no sex drive, I'm losing my hair, and, you know, my lab tests are coming back normal and I don't understand what the problem is. Or even worse, they do go to the doctor, they do find that there's something wrong. They do put them on, you know, the bioidentical hormone replacements, or they put them on uh, Synthroid or Levothyroxine or Armor, and lab tests actually go back to normal, but they're still suffering. And, and there's, there are reasons for that. And, and a lot of patients that come into our office were kind of the last resort because they've reached their wits end. They're, they're, they've done everything that they know to do. They think they're doing all the right things, but they can't figure out what's going on. So my goal in this video is to give you some tools to help you at least know what the next step is to try to figure out what exactly is going on with you. So you may wonder why a chiropractic physician is talking to you about, about um, thyroid and hormones. Uh, you know, we're back pain doctors. <laughs> well, let me clarify, I do enjoy moving bones. We do see acute care patients in our office. Um, but I've gone above and beyond what the traditional chiropractic training is. Um, I've been a chiropractic physician for over 10 years. Um, I do have a, a bachelor's degree in sports science. Um, got my degree in, in 1993, so I've actually been involved in healthcare for um, over 20 years. I uh, am currently working towards my Diploma in Nutrition, which is a postgraduate study course um, through the University of Miami. Uh, I am a member of American Functional Medicine University. Uh, I graduated the American Functional Neurology Institute in Functional Neurology, which we'll get into it a little bit here uh, as this video goes on. And I'm a certified postural extra exercise professional. And all of these things will come into play as I go through and explain what could be going on with you in your situation. So what are my goals for this video? I always want you to know where we're going so that you know what the, the intention is and what we're doing. First one is we have to get away from labels. So let's say that you're labeled with uh, estrogen dominance. Let's say you're labeled with uh, PCOS. Let's say you're labeled with type 2 diabetes. Let's say you're labeled with hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, uh, fibromyalgia. All these are conditions that we can work with in this office utilizing the techniques that we use. But it's very important that you understand that when you are given a label, the problem with labels, the problems with a, a, a diagnosis is that you get pigeonholed into a treatment for that diagnosis. For example, if you're diagnosed with a thyroid condition, a hypothyroid condition, typically the treatment for that is going to be either levothyroxine, synthroid, armor, or some sort of a synthetic hormone to try to support that thyroid function. The reality of it, as you will see in this video, is that most of the time the thyroid is not even the problem. And you can't treat isolated parts of the body and expect to recover health. It's, it's next to impossible to do. So my, my goal, one of the goals in this video is to get you to get away from the label process and get into understanding that you have a whole body that we have to work with and that we have to try to resolve. I, my goal in this office is to help patients reinvent their lives. We have a lot of patients that come in this office that they have low energy, they are absolutely miserable, you know, and we live in, in this society right now, we live an average of 78 years. Now you can change that. You can change your, your genetic expression, you can improve your health, and you can determine how you live the rest of your life. You can totally change the direction that your life is going. If you decide to work with us in this office, six months from now, you'll be a completely different person than you are now. So our goal is to reinvent your life, not just to manage symptoms. Knowledge is power, you have to know what the right things to do are. You have to know the difference between good information and bad information. And what's key is you have to know what these things are for you because everybody is absolutely different. And then always to give you an exit strategy. Most of our patients have spent their life scheduling their time around when is their next doctor's appointment? When do they have to go for this appointment? When do they have to go get this test run? If you work with us for the next six months, my goal is to make you as independent as possible. I don't want you to need me. I don't want you to need 
you know, to go to your, your doctor all the time and spend your life at doctor's appointments. Your life is meant to be living, not in doctor's offices. And we try to give you an exit strategy so that you can become self-reliant and know what you're doing and know what you need to do for your body to live the life uh, that you're designed to live. Now, there's some understandings that you've got to have if you want to reinvent your life and move forward in your health. First one is that the elevator to incredible health is closed. We are a society that is constantly looking for the fast fix. We're looking for losing 30 pounds in 30 days. We're looking for, you know, my energy increased in one week by taking this given supplement. The truth of the matter is, the elevator to incredible health is closed. You have to take step-by-step -step processes that are done consistently and you have to understand that today's action predicts your future outcomes. So if you look at where you are today with your health, you can understand what your thought processes have been, what your attitudes have been, what your actions have been in the past because they've created your reality today. So today our job is to figure out what small steps do we need to take consistently to recreate your future? Because today's decisions and today's actions are what determine what your future outcomes will be. So it's a very important factor. And again, knowledge and action equal power, okay? What is the right knowledge? You have to know the right knowledge, not just in general. For example, you know, Cheerios is a heart healthy food. That's a great marketing plan, but it's not a truth. You have to know what the truth is. Um, and the other thing you have to know is what's the right action for you. Some patients may be able to have a certain diet or do certain exercises and have their lives function in a great normal way and have great results. Whereas other patients, that might be the exact opposite of what they need. So it's very important that you not only have the right, <coughs> excuse me, not only have the right knowledge, but you have to have the right knowledge for you. And that's what the goal is in our programs here in our office. Now, a lot of patients come in to us because they have a thyroid condition. Again, they have that labeled thyroid condition or they have a hormonal condition. Again, a labeled hormonal condition or a diabetic condition or fibromyalgia or peripheral neuropathy. All these different labels that bring people into our office for us to really work with and try to help them. But the fact of the matter is the majority of the patients that come in, no matter what their label is, they suffer from a whole array of symptoms. And you can look on here and you can see you've got um, insulin resistance, fibromyalgia, vertigo, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, IBS, insomnia, Crohn's disease, all these are situations and, and conditions that patients are attracted into our office for because when you treat the whole body and you figure out why the body is malfunctioning, you can actually have these symptoms start to clear, these uh, diagnoses and these labels start to clear themselves out. Um, a lot of our patients, when they come in, they, they have issues with anemias, they have issues with thyroid dysfunction, unstable blood sugars, adrenal gland dysfunctions, autoimmune issues, hidden infections, on and on and on. And if you have all of this stuff going on and you're labeled with a thyroid condition and you're on Synthroid, it's not going to fix all of these issues. You've got to get in there and figure out what's going on with all these issues. Well, how do you determine this stuff? Very specific testing. It's called functional nutrition. We take lab testing, we take objective documentation, and we move forward and help to resolve those situations. And, and most of the lab tests that we do in our office are not done through traditional medical models. So all cases that come into our office, the majority of the time are a combination of metabolic issues and a combination of neurological issues, neurological being brain-based or structurally based issues. Um, and you're going to see that as we go through this video, you're going to understand what the difference is with that and how this works and why this works. Now, what is metabolism? This is very, very basic. Metabolism is we eat food, we process the food, and the output is energy. That's what metabolism is. 30% of our energy goes to what system? When you eat, uh, let's say you go and you eat a hamburger and your body processes that hamburger and you get your energy, which is your metabolism, food in, energy out. 30% of that food goes to which system? I want you to ask yourself this. Does it go to your endocrine system, which is all your hormones? Does it go to your digestive system, which is your, obviously your process of digesting that food? The nervous system, the immune system, the cardiovascular system? You know, where does that 30% that, that of that energy go? It goes to the nervous system, okay? It goes to the spinal cord, it goes to the brain. It goes to the nerves. 
we have to have a prop properly functioning thyroid to have proper metabolism. If we don't have that properly functioning thyroid gland, which controls our metabolism, then that 30% of that food that's going to be converted to energy has a negative effect, which affects our brain, spinal cord, and nerves. So that's where the neurological aspect of treatment comes in. And that's why people who are suffering from thyroid issues or what they consider thyroid issues have such a wide array of symptoms. They have brain fog, they have fatigue, they have depression, things like this that are effects on the brain and on the nervous system because without that properly functioning thyroid gland, you're not gonna have proper metabolism, which means you're not gonna have properly functioning nerving, a properly functioning nervous system, which entails, controls the thyroid gland, which creates a vicious cycle. So you really have to have that thyroid brain connection working properly, okay? So what are some symptoms of patients who have thyroid symptoms or thyroid condition? Now, pay attention to these symptoms, okay? We have fatigue, we have increased weight gain, even with a low calorie diet, morning headaches, depression, constipation, sensitivity to cold weather, poor, sensi or poor circulation. You can read the list here, but what's important about this is you understand fatigue, that's a metabolic system. That's a, it could be a nervous system issue. Increase in weight gain, again, that's a metabolic condition. Headaches could be a, ne a neurological situation. Depression, neurological. Constipation is digestion. If you go through this, you've got skin, you've got metabolism, you've got digestion, you've got brain, you've got so many systems in the body being affected when we have what we consider to be a possible thyroid uh, concern or thyroid condition. And the reason for this is because there are thyroid receptors in every cell of the body. So if your thyroid meta metabolism is not working properly, it affects everything in the body. And that's why there are such a wide array of issues that patients uh, experience. The thyroid supports your bone metabolism. It supports your immune system, brain and nervous system, endocrine system, GI function, liver and gallbladder, hormones, fat burning, insulin, um, healthy cholesterol levels, proper stomach acids, Again, every cell in your body has a thyroid receptor, so it's very important that this thyroid metabolic process is working properly. Now, the thyroid gland crosstalks with all these different parts of the body. It communicates with your immune system, with your gut, with your brain, and with the endocrine system, but the important thing is these systems also talk to the thyroid gland. So let's say that you're having hypothyroidism and you're having all these symptoms that we talked about and you're on levothyroxine to try to support the thyroid gland, your lab values are normal, but you're still feeling these symptoms, well, this is why. What if the endocrine system has a problem? Which, what if your adrenal glands have some kind of an issue? What if your brain is having an issue? What if your gut is having an issue? What if your immune system is having an issue? All of these things affect the thyroid gland as just like the thyroid gland affects all these systems. So you have to look at the entire function. And again, we do that through testing. We do that through complete neurological evaluation. We do it through complete, uh, through complete blood work, urine testing, saliva testing. We, we go very, very in depth in our exploration to see what is going on with you. So here's how the thyroid gland works. You have the hypothalamus, which is in your brain. The hypothalamus releases TRH to the pituitary gland. Okay, now your pituitary gland is the master gland of the endocrine system. The pituitary gland sends signals out to your adrenal glands, it sends signals out to your thyroid gland, to your ovaries, your testes. The uh, pituitary gland controls your endocrine system. The pituitary gland releases TSH, which is what we all know because that's what is commonly tested when we have a thyroid issue. TSH then call, tells the thyroid gland to release T3 and T4. Okay, now T3 and T4, T3 is the active form of the thyroid hormone. Now I've seen numbers anywhere from 3% to 7% of what is released from the thyroid gland itself is T3. So that's the stuff your body can actually use. T4 cannot be used by the body. We can liken this to coffee grounds, okay? Um, you get some coffee beans and you've got those ready and you put them inside your coffee filter, put it inside the coffee maker, you push the button, the water runs through, and you get some kind of brownish water, but you don't get a good high quality coffee because that coffee bean has not been processed or ground up for the water to get in there and make a good pot of coffee. Well, that's what T4 is. T4 is the equivalent of the coffee bean itself. T3 is the ground up coffee bean that the cells can use, that your body can use for energy. Well, coming out of the thyroid gland, you only have three to 7% of T3. 
So you have to convert that T4 into T3 so the body can use it. Okay, now here's an important factor. Your TSH level, if your T4 level is low, the pituitary gland is going to say, hey, we need to make more TSH or we need to make more T4 because the, the body doesn't have enough T4 and T3 to, to support the metabolic processes. So your TSH is going to go up. So on your labs, if you have a high TSH, that indicates low thyroid function. So that's why they'll put you on uh, Synthroid or Levothyroxine, which are um, synthetic hormones of T4. They'll put you on those, that normal level, that, that T4 level will come back up to normal, so your TSH levels will come back down. So now you have a normal lab finding, but all you have is a bunch of T4. If that T4 is not being converted again, then you're still gonna have symptoms. Okay, well how is that T4 converted? The T4 binds onto a, a what I like to call a taxi cab. It's called thyroid binding globulin. And that thyroid binding globulin carries that T4 to different parts of the body for conversion into T3. So for example, your T4 goes to the liver. About 60% of the conversion from T4 to T3 happens in the liver. Well, what if you have a liver problem? What if your liver's not metabolizing properly? What if it's not, um, it's not functioning properly? You're not gonna get that conversion. You can take all the T4 you want to, all the levothyroxine that you want to, if that liver is not functioning properly, you're not gonna get that conversion of T3 and you're still gonna have symptoms. So we have to look at liver function. 20% goes to the gut. If your gut is not functioning, if you have chronic inflammation, if you're eating foods that you're sensitive to, if you have irritable bowel syndrome, if you have um, parasitic issues, if you have chronic bacterial or viral infections, if there's something going on in the gut that's causing either chronic inflammation or leaky gut syndrome or some sort of a challenge there, you're not gonna have that conversion of the T4 to T3. What if your nervous system's malfunctioning? What if your adrenal glands are malfunctioning? What if you have other things that are malfunctioning and you're not getting that conversion in the other tissues, okay? So if you have a liver issue, 60% of your conversion of T4 to T3 is gonna be affected. If you've got a gut issue, 20% of that, that T4 to T3 is gonna be affected, conversion is gonna be affected. Other tissues issue, issues in other tissues, you're gonna have even more issue, more of a concern. So again, taking a synthetic hormone may be necessary. In some cases, when you take that synthetic hormone, and it's just a primary thyroid issue, it will change your life. You'll lose weight, you'll feel better, your energy will return, and life will change. Chances are, though, that you're not one of those people that had that happen. And that tells me that if you're watching this video and your lab values are normal but you're still feeling really poorly, that tells me that you've got something going on downstream that we've got to figure out, okay? Um, after the conversion happens to T4 to T3, then it's... Uh, can, it's carried into the cell receptor site and into the cell, and that's when proper metabolism occurs. If you don't get that T3, it's never gonna happen. Also, if you don't have the proper nutrients for that conversion on the cell receptor site, that can be an issue. You can actually develop resistance to T3 going into the cells um, through different, different situations like high blood sugar or um, excess estrogen or um, you know chronic inflammation that can cause the receptors to downregulate where they won't take that T3 in. And again, you've got to figure out what's going on with this. You've got to figure out why is it that you're still having these symptoms, even though maybe your lab values are normal. All right, and this is a part of the reason why. If you have any questions about any of this, you can feel free to email me. Uh, my email address is dr like doctor price like my last name the price is right dc like delta charlie at aol.com dr price dc at aol.com i know this can be a little bit confusing but um, we test for everything in here we test to see where the problem is we also test your adrenal glands we're also testing your hormone levels we're also testing your liver clearance okay and we address those things when we find issues with it so the thyroid basics, we've already gone through all this. Um, it's just in word format of what I just explained to you. All right, so you've been told that your lab tests are normal, okay? Here's another factor. Number one, I just explained to you why even if your lab values are normal, you could still have issues with that conversion. Well, there's another factor that's impor important, and that's how do they figure out the lab ranges? What do they consider normal? What they do is they take lab values, they take a, a pool of people that come in and get their labs done, and they create kind of a bell curve and they determine what's average, what's normal, and then they determine health based on that. 
well, let me ask you a question, who gets their labs done? Is it normally healthy people or is it normally your more unhealthy people or your sick people? Okay, so these lab values are determined by people that go and get their labs done, which is normally your people with a, a concern or a health issue. Um, so these lab values are wide-ranged, and what will happen is, uh, in, for example, in the thyroid gland, we consider a normal TSH level to be 1.8 to 3.0. In functional nutrition, that's what we look at is 1.8 to 3.0. In traditional lab values, most of the time, it's somewhere between 0.5 up to 5.0. So functional lab ranges, we consider you here. Traditional lab ranges consider normal here. So if you fall in one of these areas, then they're considering you normal, whereas we can see, okay, you're moving into a bad state, let's fix it now before it becomes an issue. So that's another concern that you have to, to be aware of when you're looking at why your lab values are normal. Your lab values may be normal, but they may not be optimal and we have to find that out and that's why we run blood work and that's why we analyze blood work differently than the traditional lab values do. Again, I went through, I went through the, uh, the TSH 1.8 to 3.0. You can have um, you know, normal lab values depending on the lab at 0.3 to 5.7. You know, 4.2, we consider that to be hypothyroid. Depending on which lab you're working, they may consider that to be normal. Glucose, 85 to 100 are the functional lab ranges. 65 to 110 is what they consider normal in most labs. If you've got, you know, 73, we consider that to be a functional hypoglycemia, whereas they're looking at it like it's normal. We need to address these things, and it's better to address them and catch them early than it is to address them when it's become a disease process. And you can see that through all these different, uh, different testing uh, markers. So what do you need to test for the thyroid? Well, TSH is what they typically test, and I've already gone over how TSH work and works and why it works, but we need to know about T4. We need to know about your free thyroxine index. We need to know about free T4, T3 uptake, reverse T3, and what's most important and very, very critical, we need to know about the antibodies. We need to know, is your body having an autoimmune response and attacking the thyroid gland, and that's why it's not working. And we can test these antibodies to find out if that's happening. When the patient comes in and they are hypothyroid, I've seen numbers as high as 85 to 90 percent of all hypothyroid patients are considered to be Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune attack where the body's making these antibodies that are attacking the thyroid gland. 80 to 90 percent, okay? If that is the situation for a patient, it's not a thyroid issue. It's an immune issue. You can take all the levothyroxine, all the Synthroid that you want to, but unless you're fixing what's going on with the immune system, you're finding out why the immune system is overactive, and you're handling what those concerns are, you're never going to recover health. You're never going to get there. And the thyroid gland is going to be continually being destroyed. So you really have to get in there. You have to do the proper testing. This is proper testing for the thyroid gland. Now, let me ask you a question. People, patients ask me this all the time. Why didn't my endocrinologist or why didn't my medical doctor run all these tests? Here's the reason. It's not because they don't care. It's not because they're bad doctors. They're doing what they can do and will do. Insurance many times does not cover these tests because the outcome does not change. If you have a high TSH and you have hypothyroidism, the treatment is Synthroid, Levothyroxine, or Armour. That's it. They don't have a treatment to manage all of these different things. If they don't have a treatment for it, insurance isn't going to cover it, why would they run the test? Because if they're not going to change the outcome, there's no need to run the test. We look at it differently. We need to know what's going on, why it's happening. We don't work in an insurance model, and I'll get into some of that later. We don't work within the limits of what insurance says because we're trying to get in there and functionally help you. We're not just managing symptoms. And, and a lot of times your doctors are pigeonholed into what they can and can't do because what insurance allows and doesn't allow. So. That's the reason, again, it's not that they don't care, it's not that they don't know about this stuff. They may or may not know about this, I don't know. But typically their hands are tied and these are the only options that they have. So we do a lot more thorough testing. Uh, in fact, we'll, we'll, a lot of times we'll work with doctors sometimes and ask them to uh, request labs for patients if they want to try to get it covered under their insurance. Some doctors will do it, some won't. We've had resistance from some docs, some docs are more than happy to oblige. Um, but we can order the labs here in the office as well. So we, we, you can work independent of your medical doctor if you want to, or we can work with them in a conjunction uh, effort. So 
We just talked about the thyroid test and we have to have all of the information to properly figure out what's going on with you, to properly manage your case and to properly help you recover your life back and reinvent your life. We have to know all the information. All right, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, uh, again, that's the autoimmune situation and as well as Graves' disease. They are not thyroid issues. I've already gone into this. They are issues where the immune system is becoming overactive and attacking the body. And you have to know this and you have to resolve that. Um, the immune system it has three parts. Now this is, gonna get, it is a little difficult. I'm gonna fly through this real quick, but these are the things that we're looking at when we're dealing with the immune system. You've got your natural barriers, which are your skin, your enzymes, your lungs, um, your eyes, your mucus, and your gut flora. Consider your body like a big tube, okay? You eat the food and even though the, the the digestive tract is on the inside of your body it's still considered the outside because it's an external um, external uh, substance that's going into the body and your body has to protect itself from that external surface uh, thing that you're eating that food and so the body has to digest that and only, only let the good things in so if there's a problem somewhere in that digestive tract and it's letting things that don't belong in the system into the system, it can cause your immune system to go awry. And that's where a lot of autoimmunity happens. Um, you have your Th1 and Th2 white blood cells. Uh, Th1 is your cell mediated or it's the innate immune response. Basically, they're the frontline defense against any antigen. An antigen is a foreign protein, a virus, a bacteria, a fungus, a parasite, something like that. There's an antigen response, a, a, a defense against these antigens when they come in the body. Th2, the humonal immune response, is the adaptive immune response. This is when um, antibodies are created and you have a more immune response in the future to this. So for example, uh, let's say there's a, there's a flu virus that's coming through and you get exposed to it. Well, your body releases the Th1 fighter cells that come in and they start fighting this thing. And then they also create antibodies to that specific virus so that you can become immune to it so that if you're exposed to it again, those, uh, those, those warriors can come in and specifically attack that virus again. So you can become a, you develop a natural immunity. And, uh, and this happens quite often. We're always being exposed to things. Your body, if your immune system is properly functioning, you're always fighting these things and you're always creating these uh, antibodies. It's a normal process. The problem is when that becomes out of balance. Now, Th3 is your regulatory cells. These are the balancing of the communications between the Th1 and Th2. And again, the challenge comes when Th3 is failing and Th1 and Th2 become out of balance. And then you start having this autoimmune response and that's a challenge. And this is just a graphic representation how Th1 can become dominant or Th2 can become dominant. Okay, so what would trigger your immune system? How would your immune system get out of balance? There's a couple different ways. Number one is dysregulation. If you have chronic inflammation, if you have a chronically poor diet, if you have bad blood sugar, bad adrenal glands, hormonal imbalances, neurological imbalances, sometimes pregnancy can kick in autoimmune conditions. We have a lot of patients that will have a pregnancy and they never go back to their pre-pregnancy uh, health status because that immune system gets awry and it just never recovers. Uh, low vitamin D, increase in blood acidity, all these things can cause issues uh, in, in your immune system and cause an immune imbalance. Also an active in antigen, you can have chronic infections, bacterial, viral, mold, and, you know, environmental uh, exposures, infection in the gut, some kind of a uh, your, your gut flora being out of balance, a yeast infection, something's going on inside the gut. Food sensitivities are huge in our society today. And we test for those. We test for all of this, okay? We test for all of this to figure out what is going on with you. Environmental toxins and leaky gut syndrome, all of these things can throw the immune system out of, out of whack. Again, if you have this stuff going on, taking medication for the thyroid gland or taking a bioidentical hormone to try to balance your hormones is not going to address all of this. And that's what we do in functional neurobolic nutrition, our neurometabolic nutrition, is we get in there and we find all of this stuff and we help you remove the challenges. We support you supplementally to help the body try to heal itself and function more optimally. And then you reinvent your life. It's a beautiful thing. We see miracles happen in this office every day. Thyro hypothyroidism, diabetes, fibromyalgia, peripheral neuropathy, all these patients come into our office with all these conditions. Now, do we treat these conditions? Do we treat hypothyroidism? Do we treat diabetes? Do we treat fibromyalgia? Do we treat peripheral neuropathy? Do we treat irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease? 
No, we don't. You come in with those labels, like I talked about before, and what we do is we take the label, we want to know what's going on with you, but we go and we run these tests so we can figure out why is that label happening? And we help support the whole body to get rid of that label. And a lot of times we have great success in reinventing people's lives because we support the whole body. We don't go after a specific de disease. In fact, we're not allowed to treat disease, okay? The only treatment or cure for a disease is a medicine or a surgery according to the FDA. So we're not allowed to treat a disease and we don't do that. We support the body through normal nutrition, through neurobolic, uh, or neurological treatments, and through metabolic um, functional support is what we do. And miracles happen every day in this office. It's phenomenal. I'm sorry, get on a soapbox. <laughs> um, so management and support of Hashimoto's, just some different things that can be done depending on what we find on your lab values. All right, so there's six major thyroid patterns. If you are a hypothyroid patient, you may have primary hypothyroidism. If you're watching this video, that's probably not the case. These are the, excuse me, these are the patients who it's just that the thyroid gland is tired. You get on levothyroxine, it supports normal function, and again, your life changes, you get your energy back, you lose weight, your brain fog clears up, everything goes back to great. You still need to know why the thyroid gland fatigued and why it wasn't working, but if you are on those medications and, and your primary hypothyroid, it will make a big difference for you. Come in, we can help you figure out why it happened and support that, um, but that might be a situation where medication might be something that could help you. That's a very small percentage of patients that suffer from thyroid conditions. Hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism secondary to hypopituitary. If the pituitary gland is not functioning properly, remember the pituitary gland releases the TSH. If it's not pro functioning properly, you can lead into a thyroid issue. Thyroid underconversion, that's what we talked about. We're taking that T4 down to uh, the gut, to the liver, and to the other tissues for conversion to T3. If that, under con if that conversion does not happen, you're going to end up with a, a thyroid symptoms. Thyroid overconversion. If you have too much T3, the body can move into a hyperthyroid state, and that's a very dangerous situation. So the, the body will actually downregulate to where it can't use as much T3, and then you end up having hypothyroid issues. Uh, decreased TBG, that's that thyroid binding globulin that I talked about, the little taxi cab that carries your uh, T4 to go and be converted to T3. Uh, Elevated T, uh, TBG because of um, contraceptive or hormone replacement therapy. If you have too much of this thyroid binding globulin, then it tends to hold on to that T4 for too long, never releases it out to be converted, so then you end up with low T3 in the body. And thyroid resistance, that's where the body becomes resistant to, um, to the thyroid hormones, again, because of some sort of a mechanism, uh, whether it's from you know, elevated estrogen, chronic inflammation, whatever protective mechanism the body's trying to lay out to protect itself and you become thyroid resistant. You have to do the testing to figure out which one of these patterns is going on in order to properly manage the case. Primary hypothyroidism, we've already gone through that, went through this, so we've already gone through all these different, um, different situations. So what kind of lab work do we need to run? Well, we need to run a lot of very specific lab work, and these are just some basic samples that we do with the majority of our patients, but we can get much more specific even beyond what we're talking about here. Um, complete blood work. Now, complete blood work, a lot of times, patients will come in and say they've had their blood work done, and I'll get their blood work in, and it's a very, very minimal blood work workup. It's, it's not the information that we need. And it's very common, again, and I've explained why, because in the insurance model, they don't really care about all this stuff because it doesn't change the outcome of the treatment. We care about it because we're trying to get to the bottom reason. We're trying to get to the why of why there's a malfunction. We're not managing symptoms. We want to figure out why your body is malfunctioning and help resolve that. Complete blood work. We need a complete metabolic panel. A CBC with a differential. That's a complete blood count with a differential. A lipid panel. We need to look at your cholesterol, your triglycerides, your, um, your overall uh, lipid function in the body. It gives us a lot of information, not just what your cholesterol level is, but it gives us a lot of information as far as how your body's handling sugars and how it's processing, how the liver's functioning. A complete thyroid panel, we've already gone over that. And then what's really important is all of these lab works, all these, this blood work must be analyzed utilizing functional lab values, not lab value, not lab normal values. So I actually sit down with your lab work. I don't just look at, hey, this marker's over here and it has an H and it's in bold. This is a problem. I don't look at that. 
I look at every normal value that comes into my office and I plug it into a different value system and I determine if there's a functional issue, an optimally functional issue. And a lot of times we'll take a completely lab, a normal lab value and we'll go over here and we'll see just a ton of issues going on that people had no idea was there. And their doctors are telling them the lab values are normal because they are based on traditional lab values. Adrenal and hormone salivary testing. The American Endocrine Society says that salivary testing is the ideal way to measure hormone function. As an example, I had a patient that came in that was dealing with a lot of uh, weight gain issues. Um, he, he had lost his sex drive. He was just, he, just not happy with his life. When I got his blood work back, it said his testosterone was three times normal. And he's like, Doc, it doesn't make any sense. I don't understand why my testosterone is high when I don't feel like a man, for lack of a better term. I don't feel this sex drive. I don't have energy. I don't have this strong personality. I feel very, um, very weak in myself. And so we did the salivary testing on him and it turned out he was estrogen dominant because what happens is the blood uh, hormone levels uh, are not the hormone levels that are being utilized. They're the hormone levels that are circulating in the body, but the salivary levels measure what has been utilized in the body. So there is a, a debate that's going on in the healthcare industry about whether it's blood or saliva. We stick with the salivary model, the American Endocrine Society sticks with the salivary model, and we found it to be very effective for us. And we also test your adrenal glands because they are critical in, in normal function. Leaky gut testing, we can actually run a blood test to see if there are proteins in the body that should not be there. And if there are, we have a marker and we can use this to help resolve that leaky gut situation. Food sensitivity testing, critical. Almost every person, person that has a thyroid issue or a hormonal issue has some food sensitivity that they are not aware of. And we have to test that because if you chronically eat these foods that your body is sensitive to, you're chronically feeding this, um, this inflammation and you're chronically moving into a situation that's poor health. So what makes our office different from every other, other the office that you've possibly seen? Well, I've explained a lot of it now in our testing and our approach and how we look at things but we manage and support patients neurologically and metabolically. Metabolically, again, is nutritionally, dietary, uh, metabolic concerns, and neurologically, we're looking at brain function. We're not just looking at the adjustment, which is a big part of what we do, but we're also looking at how is the brain functioning? Is there a decrease in brain function? And if there is, we need to try to resolve that, and we use functional neurology to get in there and do that. All right. Functional nutrition is based on lab findings. It's based on testing the gut, testing the thyroid and the adrenals. We're looking at the liver and the biliary system, which is your gallbladder system. We're looking at anemia, sugar regulation, and autoimmune regulation. All these things are looked at with functional nutrition. And then comprehensive neurological and metabolic workup. We do neurological testing because we have to find out, you know, which side of the brain is functioning properly, which side is decreased in function, why that's happening, what part of the brain specifically is not, not functioning properly, and we go in there and address that. And we go through all these different testing. Neurologically, we're testing all these different areas. We're looking at uh, blood pressure bilaterally, because that tells us specific information about the brain function. We're looking at tissue oxygen saturation, heart rate and rhythm reflexes, eye tests, cranial nerve testing, cerebellum testing. And then metabolically, we've already gone through all the stuff that we test metabolically, okay? So metabolic problems, because 30% of your consumption and your energy is used by the nervous system, metabolic problems typically lead to neurological problems. And then when you eat that food, you get that decrease in that energy. So there's definitely a thyroid uh, brain connection or a gut brain connection or a metabolic and brain connection. Four categories of neurological problems. You can have abnormal sensations. A lot of patients will come in this office. I just had a patient come in the other day and we were doing their neurological evaluation and they had no feeling in their feet and they did not know this. That's very, very common. Most people don't know how poorly their nervous system is functioning because they habituate and they overcome their deficits. They had no idea they could not feel their feet. Um, abnormal movement. You know, we'll do a cerebellum test where you're taking your hands and you're touching yourself finger to nose like this. And I'll have some patients that come in and they try to touch their nose and they're hitting, you know, way up here or down here or they just come up short. These all tell us different things. And people have no idea that they're not functioning properly. They just know they don't feel right. They just know that they feel like they're having symptoms, but they don't realize how off their body really is. Abnormal cognition. You know, we all have those short-term memory losses. We all have those 
those moments in time where um, you know, we walk into a room and can't remember what we walked in there for. We walk out of Walmart and can't remember where our keys are. We're driving down the road and all of a sudden we're like, where are we? You know, these things happen a lot to patients with thyroid issues. Um, they just feel like they have a brain fog and they have no memory. They can't find words that they're looking for. Personality changes. All these different things can happen with neurological concerns. And posture is huge. Structure, structure determines function. And if you see somebody who's bent over, and having a postural issue, that's a challenge and that, that inhibits healing. So we have to rehab that and we have to get you into normal, normal postural situations. 70% um, of what the brain does is to stop activity. Your body is designed to be going, going, going and your brain modulates that. If the brain's not working properly, um, weakness in one area will increase the firing in other areas because the brain is not inhibiting those signals. So we're looking for that and we figure out where that's happening. Two areas that need to be inhibited the most, your sympathetic nervous system, your fight or flight system, how your body handles stress, and your limbic system or your emotions. If you start having decreased brain function and your body cannot inhibit these areas, then you're gonna be chronically, chronically stressed, you're gonna be chronically dealing with anxiety, your, your emotions are gonna be unchecked, you'll find yourself more irritable, you'll find yourself depressed, you'll find yourself having issues emotionally that you d used to didn't have and we get in there and we test and look for different things like this. Sympathetic escape is when, you're, when your uh, body is not quite controlling the sympathetic system like it should. I mean, you can see you've got headaches, sensitivity to light and sound, hormone imbalances, high blood pressure, poor digestion, frequent, frequent urination, bad sleep, cold hands and feet, chronic pain. A lot of these things you saw on the metabolic side as well. Okay, so these do cross-react. Remember, everything affects everything. The brain and the metabolism, they do communicate with each other. And then symptoms of limbic escape, this is, you know, where, where the emotion, uh, emotional aspect of your uh, nervous system is out unchecked. You have irritability, lack of focus, focus, anxiety, OCD, depression, and mood swings. And once we find these things, there are things that we can do for it. We use brain-based therapies. We use fuel and activation. Um, we, 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 there's a lot of different things that we can do. Uh, we use neurofeedback therapy, which is a phenomenal brain technology, and we'll go over all this stuff with you when you're in the office so that you can understand what your, your, your treatment options are. Um, the most active area in your brain is your cerebellum. If, how do you know if you have a cerebellar issue? Uh, if you're clumsy, if you have neck and back pain, vertigo or uh, balance issues, visual disturbances. The cerebellum controls your muscular system and the accuracy and the balance of that and the coordination of that system. So if you have issues in the cerebellum, you're gonna have a lot of uh, balance and, and issues that we just discussed. So what can be done? Again, brain-based therapy, the brain is just like a muscle and it can be rehabbed through a process called neuroplasticity. Um, how does it happen? Well, you can have chemical stress, which can be medication or chemical exposure from the environment. You know, if you go out and drive down the road, you're breathing in gases, foods that you eat, if you cook in plastics, you're exposed to chemicals constantly. Physical stress, uh, some sort of a trauma, some sort of uh, physical or emo uh, physical stress, like a physical response that stresses the body. And then emotional stresses, all of these things can cause the brain to fatigue. We all have emotional stress. If you have a job, if you have a family, if you have a life, you have emotional stress. And this can all lead to brain fatigue and fewer nerve impulses. So we've already gone through some of those. So what can be done? Well, we have to feed the brain that's through the metabolic processes that we've already talked about. It's also through good glucose levels and proper oxygen. Um, your body, as we age, the ability to process and metabolize oxygen decreases. So we use oxygen therapy actually here in our office while you're doing specific activation exercises. We do brain exercises while the, the brain is being fed and through neuroplasticity, you can actually start to recover these brain functions. Um, these are some of the tests that we use and some are some of the treatments that we use for brain function. As you can see, we have a whole lot of options that we can do for you uh, with the neurological system. So basically, in essence, what we have here is a situation where we have a metabolic breakdown. Again, metabolically means your thyroid gland, it means your, your adrenal glands, it means your hormones, it means all of the metabolic processes, that process of taking food and converting it into energy. We have a metabolic breakdown, or breakdown which through that process leads to a neurological complication. Okay, so in that situation, taking a simple medication such as levothyroxine or Armour or um, Synthroid, taking a simple medication like that 
is not going to address all of the potential issues, a cerebellar issue, which we just talked about, oxygen deficit, which we just talked about, cortisol levels, which are your adrenal glands, which we've talked about, blood sugar, hormones, midbrain, all of these different issues, the gut, the liver, the digestion, all of these different issues combine to create a puzzle that we've got to solve, okay? And we determine that through proper testing. So what we have to do is we have to go through and we have to correct the brain misfiring and the metabolic dysfunctions. And we do that with very unique treatment modalities, which we've covered here in the office, and also through very detailed and unique testing. Um, this is what makes our office difference. We leave no stone unturned. We're gonna figure out what's going on with you. We're going to bring everything together. We're gonna support all of the functions of the body and get your body functioning the way it should be functioning. The body is meant to heal itself. When you remove obstacles of healing and you support normal function, the body can and does heal itself. So that is what our goal here in the office is and that's how we're gonna reinvent your life. Now, we've gone through a lot of information and there are some basic understandings that I really wanna make sure that, you, that you've got and that you understand. Um, so first, uh, first understanding you have to understand again is that the elevator to incredible health is closed. You, there is not a pill, there's not a potion, there's not a, a, a specific lotion, a magic diet, um, some magical food, some magical uh, juice drink or something like that. There's not one fix that's gonna take care of everything that you're dealing with. You've got to figure out what all the problems are and you've got to put that puzzle together. And, and you can get to that health, but it's not a quick fix. We're a quick fix society. It does not happen quickly. It's a healing process. It took you a long time to get to where you are and it's going to take work and time to get, get yourself back to that good state of health. Congruent behavior. There is a saying that says basically that it's next to impossible for you to have incongruent results with what your behavior dictates. So for example, if you're somebody who behaves like a, an overweight person, lives a lifestyle like an overweight person, you eat too many calories, you eat too many empty calories, so you're not getting you know, good high quality nutrients, you sit on the couch all day, you don't exercise. If you lead, lead a lifestyle of an obese person, chances are pretty strong you're gonna be an obese person. Now the opposite is true. If you have the congruent behavior or you carry the behavioral uh, uh, activities of a, a healthy person or a person who maintains ideal body weight, you exercise regularly, you eat the right foods, um, you practice po good positive mental attitude, uh, you, you work towards that, that healthy lifestyle, chances are very strong that congruent behavior is gonna lead you to the results that you're looking for. Now the challenge comes in, if you do have a thyroid issue, how do you overcome that? Because a lot of people with thyroid issues, they work out hard. They'll restrict their calorie diets down to, you know, 500 calories a day sometimes, which is absolutely uh, ridiculous, but they'll restrict those calorie diets down so that they, they can try to lose weight and they're frustrated because they're doing all the things that they think are the right things and they cannot lose the weight. Well, that's why we have to take the small steps that we know that are right for your body. That's where the testing comes in. It can happen. It does happen in this office every single day. We get patients in here who have tried their hardest. They just can't lose weight. And within a week, they're dropping three pounds. Within a month, they've dropped 10 pounds. Within you know six months, they've reached their goal. They've dropped 30, 40, 50 pounds. I had a patient that came in. She was a vegan. She ate a very, very clean, clean diet could not lose weight no matter what she did. She had a, a suspected thyroid issue. Her labs were normal. Um, she, she ate vegan, she ate very clean. She did everything possible that she thought she could do to try to get her health back, get her energy back, get her, her hormones back in line, get her weight gain you know, in check. And, and she just couldn't do it. She could not figure it out. She attended one of our workshops. She began care with us. Within six months, she had lost almost 50 pounds. She looks incredible, she feels incredible, she changed her life and it's only because we figured out what her challenges were and we gave her the correct steps to do daily and she did them and she changed her life. She totally reinvented her life. So, and remember, you know, today's actions do prevent tomorrow's outcomes. It's, you have to change who you are and what you do today to change who you will be in the future. And it's very, very worth it. I'm telling you, the, the lives that change coming in here and reinventing those lives, it is very much worth it. It's very much worth the effort. So those congruent behaviors are key. And then, you know, knowledge, they say knowledge is power, but the truth is, as Anthony Robbins says, knowledge is actually potential power. Knowledge plus action equals power. You've got to know what is the right knowledge 
you know, what is the truth? Again, we've covered some of the lies that are out there, some of the marketing ploys that are out there for people that have ulterior motives. Um, you have to know what the right knowledge is and you have to know what the right action is, not just in general, but the right action for you so that you can take those congruent steps each and every day. And that's what we do here in the office. Every day we find out what is needed for your body to make your body heal. So what's next? What is your next step? I told you in the beginning of this, I was gonna give you your next step um, on what you needed to do to try to make yourself uh, recover your health and, um, and reinvent your life. Well, basically, you need to call our office. Phone number is 850-862-2224 and you need to schedule a time to come in and come and see me. Come in and, and set up an appointment to come in and uh, let, us, let us see what we can do to help you. So these are the steps. This is how this process works. The first two visits are critical, okay? The first two visits are gonna provide you with all of the answers that you need. On the first visit, you're gonna come in and you're gonna have a complete neurological evaluation. Remember, we talked a lot about the brain. We talked a lot about the decreased neurological activity. On that first visit, I'm gonna do a very thorough, complete neurological evaluation to determine how your nervous system is functioning. I'm gonna review your existing labs. You're gonna bring me in your labs from your previous doctors. Okay, we're gonna go in and we're gonna look at what's been going on with you in the past and what the pattern is um, to get you to this point. Uh, if you don't have those labs, that's fine. You know, you don't need to bring them in, but if you can bring them in, it helps me understand further what has been going on with you. I'm gonna have you fill out some pretty detailed questionnaires because they're gonna point me in directions of where we need to look to try to figure out what is going on with you and your body. And on that first visit, it's, it's important that you bring your spouse in with you, okay? Because we're gonna be exploring your health. We're gonna be discussing your health. A lot of times your spouse, because they observe you throughout the day, will be able to provide me with very pertinent information about what's going on with you that maybe you don't realize. Um, also, your spouse being there can help us with the exam. He can observe what's going on, he or she, I'm sorry, can observe what is going on with you through the exam process, but they can also be there to kind of help us get through the exam process and help support you through the exam. So it's very important that your spouse or your significant other is with you on that first visit. After we do that neurological exam, I'm gonna take all of those questionnaires that you filled out. I'm gonna take the labs that you brought to me if you have them. I'm gonna take your exam findings and I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna study your case. I usually spend between 30 to 45 minutes, sometimes an hour to an hour and a half on these cases in between that first and second visit. And I'm gonna develop exactly what kind of plan that I think you need that's gonna help you recover your health. I'm gonna tell you exactly what kind of testing you need. We're gonna go over treatment plans and financial. All that's gonna happen on the second visit. Okay, so you're gonna come back in, we're gonna sit down, and I'm gonna do a case review for you and I'm gonna to explain to you whether or not I can accept your case, okay? Um, I'm gonna overview what further testing we need to do to figure out what is going on with you. I'm gonna review your new neurological findings from, from visit one and I'm gonna explain to you exactly what they mean, exactly what's going on with you, exactly how your brain and your nervous system are functioning. I'm gonna overview a treatment plan, a detailed treatment plan of what we can do to help you recover your health and reinvent your life. And I'm gonna go over your financial obligation. I'm gonna get it down to the dollar so you know exactly what your care in this office will cost you. And again, your spouse needs to be there for that second visit as well. Um, one of the worst things that can happen is we sit there, we go through these visits, um, we go through the explanation of treatment, the explanation of finances, and at the end of that time where we've spent you know, an hour and a half, two hours together, uh, you look at me and you say, you know what, I gotta go home and talk it over with my spouse because your spouse wasn't with you or your significant other wasn't with you. It's very frustrating because there's no way that you can translate to them everything that I've explained to you. So it's very important that they are in these visits with you because they are involved in your health, they're involved in your day-to-day -day activity, and they need to be there with you so that they can help you decide you know, how we're gonna move forward. And also so that they know when we do move forward, they know exactly why we're doing what we're doing and they're very supportive of what you have going on. Okay, so it's very important that your significant other is with you. Now, if you, there is one exception. If you have the kind of marriage where you know, you're downstairs watching TV and your, your significant other or spouse is upstairs watching TV and you're watching the same thing, well, if you have that kind of a relationship where they're not really involved in your day-to-day in your -day activity, you can make your own choices of what you're doing throughout the day, you make your own choices as far as what you eat throughout the day, you make your own financial choices and they don't involve each other and they have no input with each other, I can understand that and that's fine if your significant other is not with you. But hopefully you have a supportive spouse or you have a supportive partner 
um, that will be here with you and that is involved in your life um, because that support structure is important. So they need to be here with you for both of these appointments. All right, so what else do you need for your first appointment? I need you to bring in shorts and a t-shirt. Again, we're doing a neurological evaluation, so I need to have access to your legs, to your hands, to your arms, to your feet, so that I can test your sensation, so I can test these nerves and see how they're functioning. It's very important that you bring in that sh the shorts and your t-shirt. You need to have all your paperwork filled out completely before you come in for your appointment. If you come in for your appointment and you try to fill out the paperwork, there's a good 30, 45 minutes worth of paperwork. If you have a nine o'clock appointment, for example, and you come in at nine o'clock and then you need to fill out your paperwork, that's gonna put you into seeing me at 9.45 and that's gonna throw our schedule way off. So out of respect for your time, out of respect for the time of our patients, um, we need to keep you on track. So you need to come in with your paperwork filled out completely. If you don't, it's okay. We just have to reschedule the appointment and have you come in at another time. Um, and again, you wanna bring your spouse or significant other to these appointments. All right, so here's, here's my offer to you. You just spent, you know, around an hour of your time listening to me talk to you about what's going on with you. You know a whole lot now, a whole lot more now than most people on the street know about the thyroid, about what could be going on with you and your hormones and your thyroid and maybe diabetes or fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome. You know a lot more about what we do and a lot more about your body than probably 90% of the people out there you have invested an hour of your time. Since you've done that, you're actually gonna save me time when you come into the office. I don't have to explain as much uh, detail as we go through this process. So that helps me out a lot. So I'm gonna help you out financially for your first two visits. Um, usually the first two visits run about $450. Again, there's a lot of time that goes into this. There's a lot of time behind the scenes that I put into uh, preparing your case plan. And we spend a lot of time together face to face in those first two visits. Typically those first two visits are gonna run us about $450. Um, when you call the office to make your appointment, again, 862-2224, when you call the office to make your appointment, let them know that you've watched the DVD, completed the DVD, and you would like the $65 special. And they, they know exactly what you're talking about because they know about the special that's offered at the end of this DVD. Let them know that you want the $65 special and we will do the first two visits for a total of $65. Everything that I've mentioned will be covered for the $65. And if at the end of that 65, or at the end of those two visits, if I determine that you're not a patient that I can help, um, for some reason you're not a candidate for our care, I'll go ahead and refund that $65 for you. Okay, fair enough. So give us a call 862-2224 to schedule that appointment. Now, before we spend some time together, I wanna go over some commitments that you need to be willing to make and some understanding so that you know what will be expected of you when you come into the office if, you do, uh, if we do accept you for care. Um, I have rules for acceptance of your case. Number one, I have to feel that you're a candidate that I can help. If I don't think I can help you, I'm not gonna accept you for care. I mean, that just, just makes sense. Um, number two, you have to be willing to make serious life changes. Remember how we talked about congruent behavior? Well, the results that you have in your life right now are the results of your actions and your thoughts and your daily disciplines of your past. Those same thoughts, actions, and daily disciplines cannot continue if you want to change your future. It just makes sense. You can't do the same things that you've been doing over and over again and expect a different result. Um, so you must be willing to make lifestyle changes. And I'll coach you on what you need to do. And we make it as painless as possible, but you must be willing to make those lifestyle changes. You have to take accountability for your health. Everybody likes to blame their mom, their dad, their grandma, their grandpa, their genetics, their environment, their boss, their doctors. Their, everybody likes to blame other people for the results that they have in their health. As long as you're blaming other people and you're not taking responsibility for your health, then you are totally powerless because the only person that you have control over is you. The only person's actions that you control are your actions. If you don't take that responsibility and understand that you can control the outcome of your health, then you'll never be able to change anything because you'll always be giving that power to somebody else. You'll give that power to your parents. You'll give that power to your grandparents. You'll give that power to your genetics. Now there are genetic factors that are out there that do influence your health, but genetic potential does not necessarily dictate genetic expression. There are things that you can do to control genetic expression and we'll help you find those things. But you've got to take that responsibility, you've got to stop blaming others, and you've got to take that internal responsibility that you control your health outcome, okay? And then finally, everybody wants to know what their care costs. 
Again, by the second end of the second visit, I will cover, give you a detailed down to the dollar uh, analysis of what your care will cost here in our office. You will know exactly down to the dollar what your care will cost. Insurance and Medicare, we are in network with insurance companies, um, not all of them. Um, we do work with network, our insurance companies that we're out of network with. We will do our best to help you have your insurance cover as much care as possible. But you need to understand that this care is outside of the insurance model. Your care will not be completely covered by insurance. It will probably cover a small portion of what we do for you, but you will have out-of-pocket expense. So you need to ask yourself, you know, is getting my life back, getting my health back worth, you know, somewhere between $200 and $400 a month for me for about 24 months? Um, if it's not, that's fine. I totally understand. Maybe you're not sick enough. Maybe you're not motivated enough. Maybe your life isn't being affected enough. I totally understand that. We are here for you when you are ready, but I just want to let you know up front that there will be out-of-pocket expense. So, ask yourself a couple questions and determine whether you need to come in and see us. Again, if you do need to come see us, 850-862-2224. Um, get an appointment scheduled. Be glad to see you. Ask yourself on a scale of one to 10, how serious is your illness to you? You know, is it, is it serious to you or is it something that you're like, eh, yeah, it's, it's inconvenient, but it's no big deal. Most patients that have watched this video and gotten this far into the video and are desperate for help will answer this question. They'll be like, gosh, you know, on a scale of one to 10, it's a, it's a, it's a nine, it's a 10. I need to do something now. I can't play with my grandkids. My relationships are suffering. You know, my, my life is suffering. I can't do this anymore, nine or 10. If that's you, call us, get in the office. You're the ones that we can help. How has it affected your relationships? You know, if you sit down and you have an honest conversation with your spouse or your significant other, you will know that there's a stress there because your health is not where it should be. You're not, you know, able to communicate with them like you used to. Maybe you're not as interested in them in an intimate way like you used to be. Um, you know, maybe you've lost that intimate desire altogether. You know, maybe you're depressed, maybe you're irritable. There's a lot of ways that your relationship can be affected. And if you have a realistic conversation with your spouse, you might find that there are challenges there that, that maybe you're kind of suppressing back and not really, not really dealing with. So how is your relationship being expected or affected? How, how is your relationship with your children being affected? Are you able to go to their events like you'd like to? Are you able to play with them like you'd like to? Do you have the energy to get through the day? You know, these are all critical factors. You, you need to understand that your health does not only affect you, it affects those around you. And when you change that health, you can change the lives of those around you because you become a role model. They can see what's possible. Look at what, look at what mom's done. Look at what dad's done. They've changed their lives. This is possible for me too. You can live the life as the role model that you, you feel you're supposed to be. Um, you know, how's your work? Has your job productivity dropped? Has your, if you're somebody who earns money based on productivity, has your income dropped because of your productivity dropping? How are these things being affected in your life? You know, how, how's your ability to enjoy life being affected? Ask yourself these questions on a scale of one to 10. Um, and how, how serious are you about getting, getting well? How serious are you about regaining your health and living the life that you're living up to your God-given potential? On a scale of one to 10, when you answer these questions, if you're an eight or above, you need to call us because you're somebody that's motivated enough that we can help. <clears throat> if you're below that eight out of 10, don't call us, save your time. It's not something that you're gonna have enough motivation to try to change, okay? But if you're at that eight or above, give us a call and we'll be glad to help you. Um, due to time constraints, and I, so this was on another slide that I didn't talk about, I only accept about five thyroid patients a month. And I see other patients, I see acute, acute uh, pain patients, I see diabetic patients, I see chronic fatigue, we see fibromyalgia, irritable bowel syndrome. We have a lot of patient groups that we treat, a lot of chronically ill people. And so we can only take a limited number of each, each case because we only have so much time. So due to those time constraints, I can only take those patients that are very, very highly motivated. All right, so you've spent a little, you know, around an hour with me and you've learned a whole lot of information. I hope that it's been helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please give us a call at the office, 850-862-2224. Call us to set up your appointment, again, for your, um, for your, your two visits at $65. Again, 850-862-2224. If you have any questions that you think I can answer quickly um, about anything I've covered on this DVD, you can email me at drpricedc at aol.com. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon.